Hey guys, Jim here again, bringing you another voice tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the BE6K Small Edition and uh, getting into the vSphere and using the KVM module to access that out the box. And in this video, we're actually going to be changing the IPs uh, to match our uh, clients' uh, VLANs. Um, if you're just getting the BE6K and keeping the default settings, some of this won't apply to you, but uh, we're going to show it to you here just in case you need to make any IP changes and uh, just views on how to access all this stuff to begin with. So we're going to go into our BE6K small. And just a quick uh, overview here of the environment that we're in. Uh, we Our voice VLAN is, is the uh, .20 here with the sub interface and management dot ten going into our LAN. Uh, the way I do it is the CIMC module uh, which we had another uh, video tutorial on and the uh, vSphere um, management interfaces goes in the management VLAN. Uh, the actual VMs of our uh, call manager, Unity, any uh, voice application VMs that you might have. Um, the way I do it is I'll, I'll go in the voice VLAN. So we're going to get rolling here. Um, our CIMC uh, interface, like I said, is going through the management interface and it is the um, dot 200. So we're going to switch over to our CIMC module because we need to get in through there to get to the KVM module. Uh, since I am remote, we won't be hooking up any monitors or keyboards to the Blade server itself. We'll be doing it all remotely, which is very handy. And uh, let's get started. And the, this is still at default. It's a bad and password for the CIMC module. So we'll get logged in here. And we'll get rolling with the KVM module. I'm going to take me out of there. And we're going to launch KVM console. It will download a little Java. So you will need job on here to be able to access. All right, so now this has popped up. We're going to accept the sessions. And now we can actually see the screen that um, like you would be looking through a monitor. So it has actually come up into a shell so the actual uh, VM is not currently running. So let's just go over and take a look at the BIOS. Now let's change the boot order. And get our hard disk. We will reboot and we'll just do it this way over the summary and we'll power cycle the server. So it's coming back up now. We'll come back when it boots up. All right. So it is loaded, or is currently loading into VMware. 
And this is actually the second time that um, I've started these up, and it started initially in the Shell Access. Um, possibly when one of my other technicians was initially staging this, it had been power cycled. Or, these things are sensitive, and a thing to remember is to have these on battery backup and before, you know, taking these things down, the UCS E interfaces actually need to shut down to prevent any data loss. Um, but this is the second time I've seen it come up into the shell and I went in and just changed the boot order for the hard disk to come first. And then it loads up just fine. So just something to remember and have in the back of your minds. You may need to change the boot order um, to point to the hard disk so it will actually get to VMware when the blade boots. So it's almost finished here and then we'll get into getting into this thing and seeing how it's configured and how to change it. So we'll let this boot and by the magic of video we are back and um, VMware is now loaded and it shows this is a V6K small shows the applications that are installed pre-configured via Cisco um, so we have Prime, Call Manager, Unity Connection, uh, I am Presence, and then the paging server if needed. And you can also see what I was just talking about earlier is a warning. Server must be shut down before removing power um, so it won't lose any data. Because just like the service modules, these things can be pretty sensitive. So we're going to hit uh, F2 to get in here. And you can see the... Uh, down here that's now grayed out, the pre-configured IP address. We're actually going to get in here and change it. Default of root and password will get you in initially. So we're going to enter the uh, management network. We can see that there is the network adapters here. Uh, we'll be enabling these later for our uh, VMs. Uh, VLAN tag, uh, we can set there if needed. Since this is going straight through the router fabric, it's not needed in this case. Then our IP configuration, we'll change that to the 10.26.10.201 will be our IP. Subnet so mask and our default gateway will be 10.26.10.1. And then we'll exit out of that. And we'll restart our network. My F11 key would work. Alright. So that changes our IP address to access VMware uh, to match our management VLAN for this network. pop on over and we're going to add a another statement of a we're actually doing a, a, a host statement uh, to route through the UCS uh, router fabric. So now let's take a peek. And that is now pingable. So let's bring up our vSphere client. 
and see if we can't get into that bad boy with root password default. That was just a certificate warning. And that popped up on my other screen. Let me just move that over here. And there we are with our VMware access through vSphere. And you can see all the VMs are up and running there. So that is customizing our UCSC networking for the management VLAN to where we can access vSphere and CIMC on the management VLAN. Um, we can also go over here to our configuration for the actual server itself. I'm not hitting any of the actual VMs, just the actual uh, vSphere server. Take a peek at the networking tab and you can see that we have our management now set up here. Our VMs we are going to set up for the different networks. So this guy here will be using different adapters which we have to go in and enable I had two and three in here one is actually the uh, dedicated management For right now, let's move those down to standby. And oh, I canceled it <laughs> instead of hitting finish. Because I just roll like that sometimes. Let's try this again. And finish. Okay. So now let's go back over. to our virtual machine network and we will get um, we're going to override the failover order and we're going to get the management interface out of there we're going to actually go to, all the way down to unused in this case and we're going to move these guys um, up to active and standby or you could have active active here for redundancy purposes. And we're going to put this into VLAN 20. And so our management network is separate from our virtual machine network. So let's close that out. So these guys will be on VLAN 20 and we're actually going to be getting rid of all of these VMs in this particular, in my case, and we're going to be uh, reconfiguring them. And I'm actually going to blow them away and start from scratch on the VMs. Um, I choose to do it that way instead of keeping the host names and IP addresses that come pre-configured. I like to just start from scratch, have the host names I want on there and the IP addressing without having to go through and spend time on trying to change the IPs, uh, which can get, kind of get hairy depending on the situation. 
uh, changing the IP addresses within the servers, you might run into some database errors. And so I just choose to blow them away, start from scratch. Uh, you could definitely keep all of these on the, the subnet that it came with. I'm just showing you an alternative here for customizing and, uh, and changing uh, the environment. So that is how we get into the vSphere and access all of our virtual machines. And if you were, you know, if you were going to keep your IP addressing uh, as it came delivered from Cisco, um, you would just pop right in here um, after you logged in via the KVM module. It would show you the uh, down here. It would show you the IP address that you needed to download VCR if you didn't have it or how you needed to access it. <laughs> and that was in the 172 range. You would just log into vSphere that way and start managing your VMs and getting your prime provisioning up and running. So this is just another look at, at uh, accessing via the CIMC KVM console and getting things changed um, to meet your environment if it's needed. So I'd like to thank you for watching uh, another video for VMware. And as always, please remember to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff um, to our YouTube channel. And next time we'll be uh, getting into um, the auto provisioning, the prime provisioning tool and getting things started up. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to blow away these and start up from scratch brand new VMs. Uh, in this series, I'm going to assume that you already know how to go through the GUI and install a call manager application virtual machine. So we'll be skipping that in these series. And then when we join back up, we'll be uh, doing basic configuration, what I call basic configuration for a call manager, and getting all these applications synced up to your prime provisioning to get started on rolling out users and phones. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.